What is up? Welcome back to my channel. So if you're new here, my name is Jax and I pretty much document my anorexia recovery from day dot. Day dot was about four months ago. Even then, a lot of that was like living in that quasi type of recovery, you know, one foot in, one foot out, eating at the same specific time of day, eating the same foods every day. And I use YouTube to pretty much not just document my recovery, but help you guys along yours and also to hold me accountable because when I stop filming and I stop pushing myself, I end up sliding back so hard. So if you want a friend to go along your recovery with you, if you want to find out maybe little tips and tricks along the way, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. Let me know if any of these help you. Let me know what's helped you the most. And without further ado, let's get straight into this video. Okay, so a lot of you have reached out to me and have told me about your problem with calorie counting that you just genuinely can't stop it and your mind just goes over and over and over and over again and it becomes pretty much automatic. You can't up yourself from reaching for your MyFitnessPal and everything just becomes a numbers, numbers, numbers game. And the problem is you get so wrapped up in your own head that when you're choosing from a menu, you're trying to add up everything in your mind. Or when you're choosing from a menu, you try and look at what would be the lowest calorie option. So, you know what, at the moment, it's just pretty much an automatic thought. So you can't just stop an automatic thought like that. You have to make it a habit of stopping to do that. Oh, Jax, that sounds so simple. How do we do it? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'm gonna show you what works for me. Now, what works for me might not necessarily work for you, but I noticed that I couldn't automatically do it myself. And I tried so freaking hard to do it, but there was nothing I could do. I was like, okay, so until I can make this a habit of not counting calories, you have to take the control and the power out of your hands. So the first step I'm gonna tell you is to delete the calorie trackers. Delete like some, delete my fitness pal, don't do it. And I know it can be so difficult when you're following mini mods. So what my advice on that is, or when you're trying to genuinely up your calorie intake or just stay above a certain maximum. So, so the best thing I can tell you is to have a staple of five breakfasts, five lunches and five dinners written down on a piece of paper and then some five snacks. So what you'll be able to do is make sure that each breakfast, lunch and dinner has at least 600 calories. So 500 to 600 calories in it and the snacks have about that too. And then of course go ham on de like dessert because no one likes a fat free yogurt for dessert. No one. And if you do, try full fat, you'll like it way better. And so yeah, having those staple meals set so that you don't have to constantly add up in your head throughout the day. You know, okay, I just choose a breakfast, I feel like lunch, I feel like dinner, I feel like you don't have to start adding, tracking, going near my fitness pal, because you aren't gonna have that on your phone anymore now, are we? The next best piece of advice I can give you is that you need to recruit help for it. For example, I could never do it on my own. I just couldn't. It's too automatic. I became too obsessive. And the way you do that is by getting hold of someone you trust. Now, someone that's not going to get frustrated at you, someone that's not going to get down on you, someone that's not going to get irritated when you do struggle and have them take the control out of your hands. So there are two ways they can do that. And these are pretty much the two tips of this whole video. The first way they can help you is by going to do a grocery shop for you. And now what that's going to entail is probably not getting products that you're necessarily used to getting for yourself. So if they're gonna get different brands, remember different brands are gonna have different labels and although you might check the label, it's still gonna be something you're not used to getting. So it's still gonna be something new and different for your diet, which I think is amazing. Cause you'll notice when you go through a store, you'll probably spend about 45 minutes of your time reading the label, going through, comparing different brands and then choosing your brand that you know is the BS, gluten-free, low carb, low zero sugar, whatever. So giving that control up to someone else is a beautiful way to start. It slowly like desensitizes you and it slowly gets you used to someone else just taking the control out of your hands. Otherwise, like I said, if you go and try and do it automatically, you're gonna go for your safe brands or you're gonna pick something based on the nutrition label. So you need someone that just wants to help you. And then the second part they can, and probably one of the biggest, most important parts is letting someone else cook and prepare your food for you. I genuinely, even, you know, like I said, it's so automatic when you're preparing your own food, when you're cooking your own food. Probably notice that you slowly measure up things. You use a weighing scale. Another tip, get rid of that freaking scale, my friends. It does no good to you at all. Do it! 
right. I wanna make sure is if someone else is cooking for you, then you have no idea. You can probably rough, like roughly estimate in your head how many calories are in the meal, but you genuinely have no way of actually knowing. You don't know how much butter they've used. You don't know how much oil they've used. You don't know how many grams of rice is in the bowl. And that is probably one of the biggest best tips I can leave with you now. And maybe you don't feel you have it in you to ask someone to do that, but trust me, just take a deep breath and do it with someone you trust is always going to be there. As in, don't do it with someone that maybe flakes on you a few times or makes a promise and that's gonna be there for three meals and then you finally feel like you're making progress and then they disappear and you start slipping back. So make sure maybe there's one to two people that you know will be a constant there, that will be supportive of you, that will be there to help you along the way. And slowly you'll get used to not having to know the calories in each meal. You'll start to realize the relief you feel without it. You'll start to feel like you can genuinely breathe again and your shoulders just drop a little bit and you don't feel all tense the whole time, like genuinely going through Rain Man numbers in your head. Like it probably looks like an algebra equation, like equation in your head right now. And that sucks. It's stressful. It takes up so much of your time and energy and you start dreading meal times because you'll go back to your staples. You'll go back to your X amount of grams of this, of your X amount of grams of this, of your two tablespoons of this, or one tablespoon of this, and it's just habit. You can't just genuinely break a habit like that. It's impossible. Like Quitting a habit cold turkey, you have to be a superhuman to do that. You'll automatically go through for the serving size that you know that you feel safe with. It's what the body does naturally. Habit is what keeps us brushing our teeth at night. Please tell me you brush your teeth at night. It's what keeps us from it's routine, we rely on it. We rely on it to get ready in the morning from getting in the shower to brushing our teeth. It's that strong habit that's gonna keep you in it and the only way to break that habit is to completely remove yourself from it. That habits are so difficult to form new ones and the only way to form new one is to completely break yourself from your old habit. So the point of this video is you need someone that one is gonna be consistent, is gonna be there, and it's also to let you know if you keep wondering why you can't stop calorie counting, you can't break that habit, maybe it's because you've been trying to do it the wrong way. You've been trying to force a new habit without having distanced yourself from the old one. And it's so difficult with eating disorders because you can't just step away from food in general. You can't just net like, distance food from your life. You need it every day to survive. So like I said, until you get used to the day where you don't need to know what's in your food, have someone else prepare it and cook it for you. Have brands you've never used before. Oh my gosh, go to like the local Chinese store or something and use something with Japanese writing on it. And you're thinking, oh my God. So we're gonna delete the step tracker. I know I speak really quickly. I just wanna make these videos quick, snappy, you know? Like, wham bam, thank you ma'am. I don't know where that saying came from. I freaking love it and it's just, yeah, that's that. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope I've helped at least one of you out there. If you did like it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below, join the community. I love posting on the community challenges. I love taking your challenges from you and I have some really exciting new videos coming up and I'm gonna see you guys very, very soon. Mwah.